Yeah. All right, we're going. We're here. We're live. Conrad, thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. Um, all, what do you, yeah, first of all, so like, what are you doing back in Halifax? Are you just here for vacation or what's, what's, what's the deal coming back here? Um, it's actually the last leg of my honeymoon. Uh, oh, yeah. No I got way. married last year and yeah, I mean... As a hockey player, uh, your off seasons are usually pretty short, and yeah. couldn't fit a wedding and a honeymoon in. So uh, <laughs> we, uh, yeah, we went this year, and uh, yeah, we went to uh, Hawaii for 12 days, and then uh, stopped in uh, Alberta for a wedding. Jeez. And now on the way back to break it up a little bit, uh, we're stopping in Halifax. That's awesome. Congratulations. So, yeah, first congratulations. Of all, that's awesome, man. Thanks. So you met your wife from Halifax? Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, so back when you played here with Halifax. Yeah, in my, my last year with the Mooseheads, uh, I met Erica. Uh, she's from, yeah, Cole Harbor. Okay, nice. And that's awesome, yeah. man. It's crazy what hockey will do for you, hey? Yeah. <laughs> Damn, the All the way girls. across the pond. Mm. That's wicked, man. So does she live back in Germany with you? Yeah. Uh, uh, right after. I mean, I played for the Worcester Sharks after. So you moved there with me and then uh, wow. all the way to Chicago the, the two years after that and then to Germany. And that's where we've been for the past three years. Sounds like a beauty to me. Yeah. It sounds like a dedicated <laughs> wife. I love it. That's awesome. I'm pretty sure Marty Firk's girlfriend or wife is from here too. Uh, she is from BC, I think. Oh, BC. Well, she went to but, school. But she here. went to school here. You also met her. Uh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. You guys coming in, taking here. all the good girls, eh? Yeah. yeah the moose heads. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the moose heads. <laughs> well, anyways, man, it's awesome to have you here. I'm sure. very excited to talk to you. You're a fan favorite. When I just posted the picture of you. I don't know, two hours ago when people were messaging me saying they couldn't wait to hear from you. So, um, yeah, I'm excited that you're here, man. You just got back from working out at the new Mooseheads uh, facility. Oh, yeah. Everyone wants to get like a, a tour of there. Maybe you could give the listeners a little insight of what it's like, how the gym is, the, the new facility, and how jealous you are you didn't have it when you played. <laughs> yeah. I mean, obviously, it's pretty cool. Right here, you come in, uh, yeah, there's a little like hangout spot in the kitchen for the players and Jeez. a huge uh, picture of... Uh, yeah, the boys just celebrating on the bench like after uh, scoring an important goal in the Mem Cup Finals. And oh, as, really you, as you go on, uh, there's a couple pictures of all the first round draft picks and uh, great NHLers that went through this organization. Sick. And yeah, what else there? In the gym, there's a huge picture of, uh, of that uh, big group that all just touches the Memorial Cup. It just, I mean, it looks amazing. And when you get in there, like, can't help of getting super pumped and be motivated and for sure I mean, just yeah. help me like lift those weights like nothing i was like wow like <laughs> probably brings I'm back some really good now. memories eh oh yeah. yeah and i mean there's tons of good memories about that year i can't even imagine like just as a fan i, I went to a lot of the games and i'm um, you know the whole city was behind you guys that year and i can like just talking about it makes me excited i can't even imagine being a part of it you know so yeah, I mean, just seeing how quick those those tickets went away, like they were sold within minutes. <laughs> yeah. And, oh, yeah. I mean, we got a great kick out of like seeing like what people are willing to trade in on Kijiji for some tickets oh, from man, like yeah. summer <laughs> tires to <laughs> PlayStations, like you'd see anything on there. <laughs> That's crazy. Oh, yeah. I remember that. The, the championship game, I didn't have tickets and my neighbor, she had season tickets and her she has like a, an older gentleman and they couldn't go they were sick and they're just like you can have the tickets just mow my lawn i was like done so the game you guys won the president's cup that game i was all the way up in the rafters but i got to go see because i mowed the so lawn so you traded a lawnmower for tickets essentially yeah that's what he's saying yeah <laughs> lawnmower for tickets beautiful um all right so let, let's get right into it um you came to halifax at a young age um i don't know think i'd be able to do it how old are you 16 or 15 yeah, 17 ju just about to turn 17 so you, you're coming over here you're by yourself uh 17 years old new country new language new food probably new style of hockey tell me how you adjusted to that and how long maybe it took you uh to become comfortable in the city um, I mean, I was just so super excited going into it that it was just, I don't know, it was like an adventure. You don't really mm -hmm. think too much about what can go wrong. It's just thinking about what what lies ahead of you. And I don't know, I got here and like from the first day, uh, I felt welcome. Uh, yeah, I got picked up uh, at the airport and got to meet my billets right away. And nice. Stay with them for four years. Still oh, did uh, you? have good contact with them. They they came to Germany for my wedding. Uh, no way. Yeah, so we still uh, keep awesome. it in touch. And yeah, I don't know. You come in the dressing room and players really 
they're always excited to see the new European player too and kind of like help you to know it's not easy and yeah show you around and I don't know they made it really easy for me to to make this feel like home sure it helps when you're like six four or whatever it is guys probably tend to make you feel a little more welcome faster eh? <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's like okay yeah come on yeah, in. i don't want to fuck with you when you're when you're a little bigger <laughs> yeah that's exactly right i know from the short person perspective that would be how it is hey how's it going good nice nice okay come on in um well what would you say was like the one like culture shock that you dealt with when you moved to canada for the first time like food i don't know anything really uh i mean there were a lot of things one of the things i learned the hard way was that you can't swear in front of kids <laughs> <laughs> the hard way <laughs> well you can swear in front of kids in germany uh, i don't know i never <laughs> realized that there was like so much emphasis on not doing it true and yeah i guess i know right from the start i really got into like working in the community because i had so much extra time on my hands and i remember being at the iwk and just dropping f-bombs <laughs> in there and until someone pulled me aside and like dude dude can't do that Relax like, a little. oh okay i don't know i just every time i watch tv that's all they they seem to say and they're like yeah no but can't do that with kids present and kids are all swearing these days anyways yeah i don't worry about it yeah that's hilarious thing. that's didn't, awesome didn't scar me too much but now i know and uh try to avoid it as much as i can i think we all do as a whole i would say you try to but i mean fuck what could you do right there you <laughs> go for fuck <laughs> yeah there you go that's good so your billets you like them right off the bat eh? that's a huge key when you move into the billets house for the first time so if you're with them for four years obviously you like them yeah it was a wonderful time and uh right when i came my dad and my brother came with me and they got to meet them and yeah so they could kind of see like what it's going to be like for me so it was not just a they send me off by myself and then uh yeah and then they keep wondering what's going on yeah yeah and with with our farm at home it was hard for both of my parents to go at the same time oh you but have the, a farm yeah we have a farm in germany and all my siblings are younger than me and at that time it was not it wasn't it wasn't possible for all of them to come at the same time so kind of like Scattered. I know. Yeah. How big's your family? Like, how many siblings got, do you have? Uh, two brothers and a sister. And so your farm is like, obviously, would it be like livestock, animals, and stuff like that? Like, you guys would yeah, work it's there? Yeah, just a, a small dairy farm. Not okay. too big, but cool. enough to keep you busy. Yeah, no doubt. And yeah. That's awesome. I didn't know that. <laughs> yeah, so my dad came with my brother and met the billets. And even uh, one of the exhibition games was in PI. And uh, the whole scouting crew from the Mooseheads took them on the ferry to PI. And no, that's game. really cool. Like, they had a blast. So it's gonna. It will be easy for them to just let you go. Then they know you're in good hands. Exactly. I have a question though. Did you know English before you came here? Like English was a second language at home, or did you completely pick it up while you were here? Um, I mean, in German school, they they take a lot of pride in learning their students English. Mm -hmm. So, kind of had the basis down. I could understand most of it. What helped me a lot was that, like, my grandma was pretty good, so I knew how to form sentences. It was just a matter of learning more words and picking up more. But if you're already at a point where you can ask, like, what do you mean? And then, yes. like, maybe they can describe it a little bit and you pick it up. And then, I know, just by asking, you learn a few new words every day. And before you know it, within a year, you pick up so much and... Yeah. yeah, just snowballs from there. When you first got here, did you go to high school or were you obviously not university, right? High school. Yeah, I went to PA for a little bit. How did you find that? <laughs> it yeah. was definitely a different experience. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you think? Dartmouth. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I mean, it was fun. It definitely helped me improve my English because I did not just pick up the locker room English. I actually learned some school English too, which yeah, there you really go. helped me. You probably learned some gangster too over there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Is the schooling system, I know it's kind of off topic, but I want to know, what is the schooling system similar in Germany to over here in Canada? Uh, yeah, is it's it pretty bit, different. Is like, it? You don't really pick your subjects, like all 13 <laughs> subjects are mandatory for everybody. And you have all 13 of them, like every school year. Okay. And Jeez. usually the teachers change the classroom. So you're with the same group, like all year. And okay. I is know. that all the way through? Um, same style? Yeah, I mean it can be if you wow. if you have a I mean we have different marks, but if you fail two of the thirteen classes, you have to do the whole year and the whole thirteen classes. If you fail over. two, yeah, oh I'd have been man, fucked. that's harsh. Two, yeah. So when you came here, then you're switching classes randomly at all times. Were you or were you just rolling with the hockey boys for the most part? Yeah, usually they. I mean, they'll try to have a at least one guy in my class so they can right. kind of show me around and makes sense. 
I know, but I've thought like, I don't know. I thought it was easier to make friends in school in Germany because like, you know, like, okay, this this is going to be my class. Those 20, 20 kids, yeah. they're going to be with me all year and you got to get to know everybody of them, even the Shire kids. At and some point, right? At so, some point, yeah. yeah. And they're like, I feel like it was pretty easy to just like fly under the radar too and not really talk to anybody in your class because next class uh will be a whole new group of kids yeah it literally might not be one person at all that's in the same class yeah that's crazy it is um growing up in germany playing hockey at a young age it's obviously a canadian staple but here in halifax it's kind of a bigger city and you're coming from a smaller city in germany how did how did you play against teams like was there was there a league when you were younger or did you just have one community team like how did it work uh, over in germany uh yeah my my hometown is not very big but it uh, it's known for a having a really good hockey program okay and yeah i mean i played there from from the start until i left to go play with the mooseheads oh wow with one organization yeah that's and, cool and so when whole, did, okay sorry you yeah go. the whole time uh they're always uh, top tier in germany and i mean most of the time like it's more like a local or i mean local but germany is so much smaller like even driving from the south of the country to the very north point you'll probably get there in a 12-hour car ride well so. yeah that was my question like did you have to travel a lot to to compete against other teams yeah as we yeah. got older but okay. i mean usually you'd have like i don't know like four or five of those road trips and you just try to have two games right away you usually play the same team uh saturday sunday and then go home and you should make it back in time for school on monday okay yeah, cool but you hope not yeah <laughs> please no school monday um, so when you came over here for the Mooseheads and you saw the crowd, you saw the organization, were you overwhelmed when you played in front of 10,000 people for the first time? Yeah, that, that was crazy. That was something that we never had. I mean, usually in our junior games in Germany, it's maybe a couple of friends from school and <laughs> parents, relatives, Jeez. but no actual fans. And then you get there. I mean, it started with the day I got drafted, like all of a sudden like all those facebook friend requests roll in and Classic. all those messages being like we're so excited to have you and i'm like wow like how many fans do they have and yeah. they look it up and they're like see that they play in this big arena and that they sell out a lot of their nights and i was mm -hmm. like wow like that just like fueled the five more to get ready and train in the summer and be like trying to get ready for the first season especially if they love you before they've even seen you then you're just like okay if i come in just somewhat all right they're still going to love me right that's got to be good for the confidence i'd say talk yeah about we'll I talk mean, about the fan base yeah because everybody everybody that we talk to about the moosehead fan base loves it right like tuesday nights they get you know eight thousand people so yeah snowstorms they still get thousands you know what i mean they just they love it around here it's awesome the cool thing about you is that you went through night and day of the Halifax Mooseheads. You were with the team when they weren't obviously that good. And then you were with them when they won a Memorial Cup. So was there any like attitude that was different inside the dressing room through those two years? Like I remember talking to Hardy about how the practices used to be so much more intense. Like if you missed the pass, there would, there would be more re repercussions. But back when I played with you, when we weren't that good, you know, pra the practices, they were good, but they weren't as high tempo as what Hardy says. Did you notice a difference at all in, uh, in I guess, the atmosphere of the team yeah i mean my first year there it was still a big step up from what i was used to in germany like mm -hmm. i mean the level is way way better oh, was it okay. and yeah i mean yeah we really seen it all i mean my first year we were last place team seriously yeah. and yeah four years later we, we were on top <laughs> but yeah it's, i don't know it was just like hard like you kind of like get in a groove where like you almost like feel okay by just losing by one goal and mm -hmm. you feel like okay like that wasn't too bad and that's just the wrong thinking but it kind of like crept in as the season went on and you realized we don't win too many games that like you almost accept the fact or you almost like you're almost okay by just not getting blown out and that's just not, not the right way to think and i don't know the last year like we we'd be down two goals going into the third and you five. just realize in the dressing room that there was not a doubt in anybody's mind that we're not going to turn mm -hmm. this game around it's just a little like hey boys let's just pick it up a notch and like get this done and 
everybody would chip in and it would just yeah go our way it's crazy that you say that because it actually showed on the ice you know what i mean like it was like you guys weren't getting blown out or anything like that and you almost deserve to win sometimes and then you don't but then as the years go on you can see like like you said you go down two goals and even everyone in the crowd's like ah fuck you know nate will score three or you know what i mean they're gonna come back there's no big deal yeah so it's kind of you can see both sides but it's just interesting that you mentioned it like that well, the confidence in the dressing room must have just been through the roof. Like you mm-hmm. just said, down by two going into the third. You're just looking at Nate or Drew and just saying, okay, these guys are going to get us out of it. And even if they didn't get out of it, like there's no there's no chance in hell they're not going to get a shot on net for a rebound for a guy to put it in the back of the net. They just they just made so many things happen. They were incredible junior players. And Still great NHL players. And that's players. just only two guys, right? Like if you yeah. look down the actual lineup of the team, like I'm pretty sure every guy on the team that year had like over 20 points at least. Just well, like the, as a unit. Yeah, the third line was Boudreau, Ashley, and someone else. And, and Hardy said all of them had 80 points. Yeah. yeah. So super deep. Um, and I was talking to Hardy also about like managing that group of talent. Um, on the back end, on the defensive end, there were six, 60, obviously. Was there any controversy or anything like that on the, on the back end, D end, or it was fine? No, it was great. I mean, yeah. everybody was happy because for everybody winning. when they scored and... I mean, yeah. at that point, like, you just want want to have success with the team and, like, having that goal of the Memorial Cup or winning the President's Cup just was higher than any individual goal and you could really feel that in the team and yeah, and that must be one of the big reasons that we actually got it done. Yeah. At what point that year did you guys, like, obviously you guys knew you were good. At what point at that year, if you can remember, was it like, okay, we're actually going for this shit now. Like, this is the real deal. We're the team to beat. Yeah, I mean, going into everybody was like, you know, this could be our year, mm-hmm. but I mean, you never know. But like, I mean, as the season went on, like more and more, you know, like, no, like this, this is the real deal. Mm-hmm. Like this, this can be our chance. And yeah, I think like way before Christmas, everyone was like dialed in knowing like, all right, this is going to be it. Like get ready for for a long season freaking right that's awesome well the year before you guys were incredible too but the season was cut i don't know who you lost to but i forget who was that first year anyways uh, but Ramuski, then the next year come, yeah was it ramuski yeah we had a, a huge comeback against quebec being down uh, oh yeah up in a series and oh, then yeah. uh yeah the round after that we lost that against ramuski and ran out of gas yeah yeah that was more it we just we were young and didn't have quite that depth yet and that's yeah, true. that series against Quebec just like took so much out of us, and then like you have that that emotion and that excitement that kind of like pushes you through the first two games. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and then after that, uh, kind of like yeah, took the wind out of our sails. And the other team knows that too that you just battle back from three games. You know what I mean? So they're going to be coming at your top guys, getting it in behind the D and working hard. You know what I mean? They know that you guys are going to be worn out, but that's an incredible feat is to be down three nothing and come back and win. Like well, against you don't Quebec see many too. teams either. Yeah, that's an yeah. incredible rink to play in the Pepsi Center, the Coliseum. Sorry, um, I noticed when we played together, whenever we did off ice training, you would always do an extra set after everyone else. Did you do that on purpose, or is that something that it's just you do? You do with uh, I don't know. I don't know. It's just something that helped me like through my whole career. I I just never was like one of the most talented guys, and I know once I set my mind to it, I was willing to put in the extra work and and just uh, try to get better and I mean I had this dream of becoming a pro pro hockey player after my time with the Mooseheads and I was willing to do anything to to achieve that and yeah if it meant putting in a couple extra yeah uh, yeah I remember well, I'll tell the story I, like you know how the mo- the metro center you can like run around so it would be, I think we were doing like off ice training and like it was all right everyone do 10 laps and then everyone would be done they'd go down get a Gatorade and Conrad would just do like one or two more extra laps and I was like eh, I yeah, get it okay. you look good it was uh, and that's kind of what gave me a little bit of a sense of your character because I didn't know you that well at the time but that's good so let's talk about the NHL draft now so after did you go to the draft or did you stay home no uh i stayed home i i don't know i think the draft was in la my year la yeah okay i mean that would have been halfway across the world and it's expensive yeah yeah i don't know and i mean my agent told me that the really exciting stuff only happens if you're drafted in the first two rounds and it didn't really look that way and I uh, know it was fine. I had a barbecue at home with my parents and my siblings, and That's we just awesome. followed it online. And nice. Did yeah. they send you a jersey? 
um i mean the i think the development camps they have they're like like a month or so after the draft oh, okay. so when i got there uh, they had a jersey and, and a hat for me and nice. yeah no it's pretty cool thing to have and no I, mean, I still have it hanging in, in uh in my room at my parents house oh yeah so i should i was gonna say i should have asked them to because we usually hang a jersey i had two moose head jerseys so we hung both of them up but i forgot to ask you if you had a jersey here any jersey uh, it's too late now obviously know. but you didn't <laughs> have anything no uh, i don't know i'm took it all home with me yeah. and it's honeymoon and he doesn't bring his jersey with him well, i don't know he yeah. could have been on the ice or something are you did you even bring your gear oh yeah you're here on your honeymoon what am i no, talking about no no i just i don't know just off house workouts no no skating for me right now it's always good to take a little breather too yeah and as soon as i get back i'll fly home uh, sunday and uh get get to germany on monday and then drive right to salzburg where red bull has their big uh, training facility and we'll have a camp there, a little mini camp for the German guys. Holy shit, so you're right back at it. Yep. Like you said, short off season. I don't, I don't even really necessarily call it the off season because for guys like you, obviously for me it's the off season because I don't do shit. But for you guys, you're always training. You're always on the ice. You know what I mean? It's just not those intense games is the only thing really you're taking off. Like it's not really an off season in my mind. Oh, well, hockey's a year-round sport, I think, mm -hmm. now. Yeah, I think, I mean, we get three weeks of uh, non-training off time so with our honeymoon taking four weeks uh, this week in Halifax is basically like a home training week for me I got my schedule sent to me and uh, reached out to Cam if I could work out at their facility and uh, yeah get my work done now in the mornings and then uh, during my time here in the afternoon so what's the training facility like in Germany? You said it's Red Bull or Red Bull what, sorry? Uh, the yeah, there's like a huge academy like for uh, Red Bull soccer and hockey and uh, the Red Bull team in uh, Salzburg in the first league in Austria and the, in Munich where I play, uh, they're close connected. And yeah, I mean, I think they just got a new gym and I think they spend eight or nine million just on this gym. And I mean, that facility is just crazy. Like has like four ice surfaces uh, three soccer uh, uh, fields inside and then another four outside i mean everything you could ask for there's rooms there there's a canteen there where they freshly cook for you all all day around like let's go there yeah, yeah let's go there we'll come meet you there talk about red bull though they'll uh, everything they do is crazy i just find it so really ironic fun. that red bull is like the face of all this like fitness thing just funny yeah. to me obviously red bull gives you wings or whatever it is but at the end of the day it just tears you apart isn't yeah isn't red bull like the main sponsor of you guys it's on the, your jersey isn't it uh yeah they're not actually our sponsor anymore they're the owners they own the team wow. they own the team so what's yeah. the name of the team what's red, the red bull munich red bull munich yeah. wow yeah <laughs> but i mean everything they do they do it right like they don't just say like yeah here's some money like do mm -hmm. do something like we we get the best to get ready like for anything like give me an example what, whatever whatever we need uh, we get like when when our fitness trainer says we need this machine because it's going to help us win games <laughs> they do it two days later we have it no matter how much that machine would cost or for our physios they say like we need this so our guys can recover quicker wow the next day we have it and i mean they they make their travel as easy for us as possible. We we fly to a lot of games. Uh, oh. <laughs> yeah. Do you no, have a they, lot of local really games? They're care of us. Is it mostly far away games, is it? Like, would you have to travel for the majority of the games? Um, no, we have, uh, I think, three teams within, like, a two-hour drive. And, yeah. I mean, like, there's not a whole lot of far road trips, but it's just nice to... Even some teams, instead of having a seven-hour bus ride the day of the game, yeah. we just fly there in the morning, stay the night, and fly back the next morning. Oh, you stay the night? They'll put you up in the hotel? Yeah. Oh, that's... Man, you got a good... That's yeah, incredible. Yeah, no. They, they've taken good care of us. Uh, they, we got nice breakfast at the rink in the morning, <laughs> and yeah, always a uh, fridge stacked with the newest Red Bull flavors. Of and course, yeah. They have flavors now? They, they went oh. organic, in fact, I heard. Sugar-free? I don't know what organic they got means. Sugar free. They got organic. They got Coke. They got not Red Bull Coke. Yeah, they have probably over there. Yeah, they have a Coke. They have uh, bitter lemon. They have uh, <laughs> ginger lemon. ale now. A spicy ginger ale. Uh, Jesus. And there's not much they don't have. I can just picture your garage in Germany right now, packed with 
bottles of Red Bull. And Red Am Bull right? swag. Uh, no. I mean, we have it at the rink all the time, so I don't need to actually stack it at home. And <laughs> yeah, we're, true. We're, we're there every day, too, so if I need to, I'll just grab a couple extra cans for home. There you go. Um, yeah. But they're, they're taking good care of us. So what's, like, the rink like that you guys play at? Like, how many people can fit in it? I saw the picture when you guys won the championship. It was packed. But, like, what's the fan base like over there? Uh, the fan base is pretty good. I mean, as, I don't know, like, European standard goes, they're super rowdy. Like, yes, they're much like soccer great. fans. Yeah. Or, yeah. I mean, we have the big uh, fan block that uh, is just standing seats right behind our goalie. And... <laughs> They have drums there and they just go nuts all game and like just get the whole rest of the rink to chant with them and yeah i mean the atmosphere is great i think it holds six six and a half thousand people that's a good amount and Absolutely. uh yeah for the most part we get that early in the season uh it takes a while for the fans to get into it but uh <laughs> after that they usually sell out and cool you can imagine yeah. the atmosphere you watch something like the spangler cup right it's over in switzerland if i'm not mistaken and it's just it's like an nba game they're they're just pumping music everyone's cheering their shakers going all the time they oh, don't yeah. care who's playing they're just having a wicked time oh right? yeah it must be so fun to, to go out on the ice with that for that kind of shit yeah and the thing i love most about it is like usually when you come out on the ice like they announce every player individually and usually the announcer would just say their first name and if whole stadium chants your last name and no. it just gets your blood goil, go, uh, boiling like right off the start probably a lot easier for them to say your name over there than people over here hey? yeah that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah talk about that going to like some french cities how do they announce your name can you give us some like completely Ooh. messed up Butchered. pronunciations oh i don't know i mean my <laughs> french is awful <laughs> but i mean it it got to the point where i'm like i mean i just introduced myself as conrad and yeah that's just easy stick with that <laughs> yeah even now still when i'm here like i know when we make dinner reservations or something i just don't bother going with my last name having to spell it out three times just well, it takes to, 14 minutes to spell it yeah so. so i just be like yeah put the reservation in conrad I'll, i'm sure we know who, who, who they mean i'm sure when they hear you talk when you come in they'll, they'll probably put it together right yeah no, they're, they're not saying no to you that's for sure when I did the intro here before you guys got here, I had to do it like eight times because I kept mispronouncing your name. Oh, you can't I even think I did it right, but you can't even say Sheldon Surrey. Sheld so. Sheldon Sher Sheldon Surrey. See, yeah. Sheldon Surrey. Yeah. Well, anyways, he's a bum. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, we might get him on the podcast. You can't be. Well, not now. Well, yeah, maybe not. I just I just sewered us. Um, oh yeah. So I wanted to talk about. I don't know. Fuck. Where was I? <laughs> I guess we already did talk about your home. Um, yeah, so you're a fan favorite here in Halifax community involvement. Um, you said you caught, got caught swearing a couple times at the hospital. Um, <laughs> was there any other like things that you did in Halifax that were uh, memorable, I guess, for community involvement? Because here at the High Button, we're trying to get out into the community more and uh, show the High Button off, I guess. Is there anything that you, you did that uh, you really enjoyed with your time here in Halifax? I mean, definitely my visits to the IWK were, were uh, yeah, they were so inspiring, really, uh, seeing those little kids uh, battling, like, mm. their diseases and being yeah. so strong. Like, they seemed so much stronger than the parents at times. And, yeah, I mean, it, it, it's always hard. You go there and obviously you want to be happy and have a good time with them. Uh, but once you leave and you kind of, like, yeah let it all go through your head like what you just saw and like mm -hmm. what's going on there kind of like brings you down but then again like those kids cherish those moments and and it makes them feel like they're healthy and everything's perfect in their world for for a little bit and just having a about. chance to do that and yeah mm -hmm. i mean going there and then actually being known uh may yeah it's it's a nice feeling and and the kids have such a good time uh yeah i mean i i just love doing it and i couldn't get enough of it so i tried really spending as much time as i can there and i actually had the chance to bring the president's cup there before i left and no uh, way. help out for that uh, telethon they had and I yeah okay that was definitely uh yeah a really nice experience so that's a good thing right because those kids then they forget for that period of time that you're there what what is going on it's like when you go to the rink 
everything else is is out of your mind. You know what I mean? You're there for that. Same with those kids. I know, and you know, from being a kid around here, that the moose heads, you're like, you know, it's different when you get up into your yeah. teens and stuff like that. But when I'm a kid, man, like even just to go down and get an autograph was like the greatest moment ever, right? So I, I was just picturing it as he was explaining it, how pumped these kids would be. Yeah. Well, that's awesome that you came out and did that. Um, who was the guy? Someone commented on the thing uh, on the Instagram page saying that they loved your community service and you as a hockey player. So I had to make sure I brought that up for that that fan that commented. So um, that was a great answer. So yeah, the World Cup of Soccer is coming around the corner. Germany, do they have any shot of winning? I really know any, don't know anything about soccer. Do you? Do you? I know we're not that well, great. We are the reigning champions. You guys uh, won four years ago. Yeah, I did we know did. that. Oh Jesus! I feel like an idiot. We'll just watch Sports Center. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't watch that. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure we have a good chance again. Uh, I mean, there's a lot of good teams out there. Um, yeah, but I mean, it can't help that. I don't yeah, the reigning champs. Yeah. So soccer is obviously big country. in Germany. Did you play soccer as a kid, or was it just hockey? Um, I was one of a very few of my classmates that played hockey everybody plays soccer in germany it's basically really? like hockey here like the complete opposite yeah so like i i was kind of like one of the kids like oh why are you playing hockey like everybody's playing soccer but just from the minute i played hockey uh, i knew this was this was my sport and that's what i wanted to do and i don't know i had younger siblings too and yeah i mean Did they you guys you guys know for sure too how much uh, it takes for parents to drive you around to practices and Fuck games that. and how much time it consumes so yeah. it was like well everybody gets to pick one sport if, like with my siblings mm -hmm. i don't have time to yeah so everybody can pick two or three sports and i'll, I'll never get out of the car Just can't be done yeah and yeah so how did you get into hockey then if everyone's playing soccer and it's mostly a soccer world what triggers your mind to go okay i want to play hockey um well we have a little lake next to our farm okay and oh nice yeah, I, I have a huge family. My dad has nine siblings and he's the second youngest. So I have a lot of older cousins and two of them already played hockey. Okay. And usually like when the when the pond freezes, like the whole family is out there. And <laughs> yeah, usually my parents or like all the my uncles and them, they kind of play like a curling like game. And, yeah, yeah. And we kids played hockey and then I don't know, I had so much fun doing it. And then my cousin's parents were like, you know what, you should come check it out there's a team in town they're pretty good there yeah and i went there and i loved it from the first day never looked back growing up who were some of your idols that played in the nhl uh coming up in germany not even germany just in the nhl in general um well i, I always loved nicholas lidstrom i thought he i don't know great defenseman uh, both sides of the ice and just a, a good leader like someone to look up to and very calm. i know that's really someone like that i always wanted to be when i when i play uh I like playing offensive and mm -hmm. i just like i don't know leading by example yeah did you, you know you go so i was just gonna ask you were you always a big kid or did you kind of just like all of a sudden sprout up uh, I think I was like average, maybe a little below average until I was like 13. And then like two summers, I just outgrew everybody. And Jesus. Then, yeah. But That's usually then how it goes, by the yeah. time I was yeah. like 16 forward, I was always the tallest in my class and yeah. tallest in my friends. That's um, crazy. No, I don't know oh, the feeling. No, you go. Sorry. I want to talk about the different style of play from Europe and over here in North America. I'm unfamiliar with the style of game um, over in Europe other, the, other than the Spangler Cup. Um, I was wondering if you could give the listeners a little bit of insight to the different style of game uh, from over there to here. I uh, mean, since, since the European ice uh, is a little bigger, like yeah. the, uh, the Olympic ice, um, you usually hold on to the puck a little longer, like, especially we in Munich, we play a real uh, puck possession game. Mm -hmm. So, like, we, we'd we rather bring the puck back than uh, giving it away or chipping it out. <sighs> so, like, so, you don't dump the puck? You'd, like, just rarely, unless like, you yeah. have someone going with speed and you know for sure that your guy's going to be the first one on it or at least uh, right on the demon. Uh, you usually don't sometimes we'll bring it back mm. in the neutral zone bring it back to the d forwards come back get some speed and we'll just try again until we get in and see my dad used to say that too he'd be like and this is crazy because he was almost advanced in the game without actually playing he would say you guys work your ass off to get the puck you have the puck and then you come out and someone's offside so you just dump it back in and give it to them he's like why don't people just go back and that's what everybody does these days it's a puck possession game so they come back you let your wingers swing you know what i mean you get them in 
good position and then you break out in the neutral zone or just inside your zone instead of just giving mm-hmm. it to them and then going on the defense again because if you have it they're not scoring yeah well it does make sense yeah and that's it's i find it more and more and more and more common nowadays like with the drop passes and everything right if you don't have your guys in full swing then they just drop it back yeah yeah i know i feel like my first year's pro over here like in american league i thought it was like a lot of dump and chase and <laughs> chipping it out of your zone and yeah i don't know and i mean i like to get creative i like hmm. sometimes i like to like to walk the line a little bit between risky and safe play <laughs> but, but that's what totally keeps it interesting and <laughs> yeah, makes fun. Yeah. yeah that's good <laughs> um <laughs> yeah what was I going to say? So you, you, you find you got hit a lot more here then once you came over to play like in Halifax and stuff like that. Obviously, the rinks are smaller and it's more of like a, I guess, crash and bang hockey, I guess, more or less. Obviously, I don't know from experience, but I assume that it's a little rougher around here. Oh, yeah. Like yeah. a lot rougher. Uh, I don't know. I, I was shocked when I saw the first. I mean, it was like, uh, I don't know, red against blue in training. Like within like 10 minutes, we had two or three fights. And I was Probably like, geez, where, where did I end up? Uh, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I don't think we ever had a fight in my junior days in Germany. And even in the pros, it's it's rare. Like, I mean, mm. they are there, but yeah. you wouldn't see them. I don't know, maybe like to put a number on it, like every like 10 games or so, maybe. Someone you just see loses their fight. mind. Yeah, yeah. but yeah did and you then, ever fight i was just gonna ask that uh not in junior I mean, not junior? Had, like something more like a little wrestle kind of thing but <laughs> no actual like drop your gloves square off and get at it i had well, two fights nice. in pro in american league but that's about it you I, do well you got like the lanky arms you're tall you could ragdoll some people do you just call his arms lanky well, well you're you got lanky here? arms like they're, well, they're oh, long they're arms. arms if you have long arms they're <laughs> lanky arms that's i just that's assume my. that the big like bigger guys always had to fight and maybe that's just the era that we grew up playing in but i remember cameron played with us he's six six and he wasn't a fighter but everyone just assumed he was a fighter because he was huge you know he didn't matter how much skill they had yeah i felt pushed a little bit my time in Worcester I felt like that's what the coach wanted for me mm-hmm. and it's really? just something that I don't I mean I'll, I would if I really have to like mm-hmm. to stick up for a teammate yeah but it's not something that I would enjoy and I don't know it's not a part of a game that I really love absolutely and I don't know it just I don't know I just don't enjoy it I mean there's guys that do it and I'm sure I get fired up too when I see one of my teammates uh, throwing throwing their fists around but yeah it's just not for me so then you're obviously one of the people that want to see fighting stay in hockey right yeah Yeah, I mean it it is part I mean Mm -hmm. I don't know I I, I, there's parts of the game where it needs where there's fights needed Mm -hmm. but I don't know I'm just not a big fan of the fights that you kind of know happen before the game already just oh, yeah, opening stage, puck stage, drop but, yeah, stuff like, like that yeah yeah I'm not not a big fan of those I mean sure they're super entertaining for the fans but I mean even look looking at that now like how many guys that uh, had so many uh, hits to their head and so many punches to their head that struggle with concussion and mm. and yeah. stuff I feel it's like you know those now. Those, those would be situations that could just be avoided. Mm-hmm. I agree with sticking up for the teammates. I was never a fighter. I, I got fought more than anything. Um, but I like you need to have someone to protect your best guys. Like you look at a guy like Gretzky, he skated around carefree because it wasn't that the the goon on his team was going around killing people for no reason. It was you just knew that if you fucked around, he was coming for you and then he was coming for your best player, right? So but a lot of the times there was no fights because nothing happened because those guys were on the ice. So that's I was, where I, yeah. that's where I think that that you know, I agree with you with the staging fight. I mean, obviously I like fighting and stuff like that, but it's sometimes it's just like, come on, you know, I always thought Trey was great on your team for that. He wasn't a guy that would do a staged fight, nope. but he was an intimidation factor. Remember the fight in Bacon O where he fought two guys behind the net. I'm Three pretty guys. sure you were in that scrum. Three guys. Yeah. You were in that scrum, weren't you? Yeah. On the ice. Yeah. I mean, they, they ran out goalie and I Earlier, mean, that's, yeah. that's one of the things like, even if the ref gives him two minutes for goalie interference or something, that's not nearly enough for no. for a guy taking out like our number one goalie like in the finals. Like yeah. you want to send a message then and being like, 
try that again and I'll I'll break your face, you know. And, <laughs> Just and don't Trey give made a chance to. Trey made sure that they know that there was no screwing around with us. Like you touch our goalie, like you know what's going to happen to you. Everybody loved Trey for that, man. He was. I mean, I didn't even know him at the time, but just what, like he made, he made me feel safe in the rink, just knowing that if I was getting fucked with, he'd probably come up and, and yeah. jump in, you know? Yeah. So that's got to be that's the kind of guy he is too. He'd stick up for anybody, mm-hmm. like. Yeah. And yeah, that's why he was such a good captain for us and such a big asset too. Well, speaking of Trey, he's going Cousner. You know Brad Cousner. They're yeah. going. They're playing in France next France, year. Yeah, yeah I in heard the that. professional league. So maybe you should give him a call and give him some advice about what uh, what to expect over there. Yeah, they definitely should step by, uh, stop by in Germany. It's not too far away. No, I mean, it's not. really thinking about it, I always say that, like, I mean, there in France, it's just like driving to Cape Breton, you'd be in Germany. Like, yeah. Jeez, man, I'd probably much rather go to Germany drive, than Cape yeah. Breton. <laughs> 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 yeah, well, it's like when you go over there, the transportation's so cheap. that You get on the train for like 10 euros and you're in a different country. As soon as you get there, the getting there is the expensive part, but getting around is so cheap. You can get anywhere. I have a question about your hometown. Now, now that you've played here, do you find that there's a few more people over in your hometown that know what the Mooseheads are and Halifax in general, I guess? For sure. Yeah. Uh, I mean, my hometown falling closely. I mean, obviously, they were super proud of me, too. That's sweet. That's and awesome. uh, I just went out for dinner with... Uh, with my old uh, doctor that did the uh, doctor for the for the junior team and one of the yeah some other guys that work for my junior teams like voluntary and I uh, took him out for dinner and and two and one of them were still wearing the moose heads hat I brought them when I came back no after my way. first year like <laughs> that's no, awesome I mean, man I still have friends my my brother still wears my Mooseheads jersey to my Red Bull Munich games because he just loves that jersey so much. It's a beautiful jersey, man. Yeah. It's a great, it's so unique, the Moose and the I H. love. I love seeing all the fans at the Metro Center. I call it the Metro Center and so do you. Just like with the old names and then all of a sudden you'll see one and you'll be like, oh my God, yeah. I see your name a lot, Ferk, obviously McKinnon and Drew Ann and Fucali. That's no brainer. And all the guys, mostly the guys that went on to play like pro and stuff like that, man, the crowd is just littered with their jerseys. You'll I'll see one off NHL one for you. Games. Oh yeah. Moosehead jersey. Jerseys. Yeah, it's an iconic jersey. Yeah, and that logo, it just it just jumps out of you, right? Like mm-hmm. jumps right out of the crowd, and you know, yeah. like yeah, and it's been the same That's since one the beginning of, our of time. Guys. Yeah. yeah, they haven't changed it. Well, why would actually they? no? One year they went to just Halifax. They wrote it was cursive. Remember? Yeah, that was just third jersey though. Oh, so they always had the actual yeah. moose head, did they? I don't know. Let's talk about this kid that went tenth or tenth overall Ninth, to the moose heads. Ninth overall, something like that. Some first round, first round, first first round, first, 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 yeah. 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 first round. Yeah, uh, from your hometown. <laughs> like, let's uh, and you said that his father. You're a huge fan of his father. Like, talk about the connection. Yeah, I mean, around the time when I started hockey, uh, uh, Sam Dubé's father, Yannick Dubé, played for Batolts in the second league. And That's I don't know crazy. he was a super skilled uh, forward, and he just I don't know the hands like he he had it all, and I just mm. loved watching him. And he he was my hero. And from that day on, I was like, I want to wear number sixteen. So all through my juniors in Germany, I wore sixteen. That's so cool. When I got here, uh, Travis Randall was already wearing them, so uh, I picked number ten. But as soon as I got back to Germany, I went back to my number sixteen and. Yeah. Do you think that he, have you ever told him that before? Do you think if he heard this now, it'd be the first time that he knew that you picked your number from him? I don't, I mean, I know that maybe the dad knows. I don't know if uh, the, if Samuel knows. Have but, you talked to Samuel before? Um, I mean, I've seen him around. I actually did some power skating with his dad before. And um, yeah, I mean, he's he played in, in my hometown for like most of his career. That's uh, crazy. Talk about a full circle coming around. Yeah. Like, your idol, now his son is playing for the Mooseheads. Yeah. Full circle. From your hometown. It's not like they grew up here. Yeah. Yeah. You know? All the way yeah, across. I know, the it's crazy. And as soon as I saw him getting drafted, I reached out to him and I'm like, dude, there, you couldn't have gotten a better organization mm-hmm. to play for. And yeah, he's pretty excited. And I think uh, as soon as I get home, I'll meet up with him and tell him all about it answer all his questions yeah i was gonna Absolutely. say if you have any advice to give him what what are you gonna say to him uh, about coming over here i mean i don't think there, there's too much, much to, say. to say i mean he'll, he'll get here and i know yeah. that uh the mooses will take great care of mm. him just as they did with me and all the other players yeah no it's really just about having fun maybe 
Yeah, maybe just like giving the parents a little peace of mind. I mean, obviously Yannick Dubé played for for a team in the Q2, so he knows what it's all about. Mm -hmm. But I don't know. It's always nice for the mothers to hear that yeah. someone's been there and had a great experience and it's been good for them. And no, I'm sure I'm sure it's going to be a great factor for the Mooseheads as they host the Mora Cup this year. Oh, yeah. Are you going to be coming back at all for that if they this year when they host? I, I'm planning on it. Nice. Uh, I hope... Uh, that a lot of guys uh, come back for that and maybe we'll have a little reunion going That'd right cool. around that time. Yeah, yeah, Hardy said that he tweeted out reunion party as soon as it was announced, so apparently they're trying to get something together. We're going to get tickets and try and go too, maybe oh, yeah. maybe run into you boys and we'll film the reunion, you know? There you go. Yeah, we'll Film it, right? Have you, ever, can keep. have you ever played in the Spangler Cup? No. I heard uh, that's a party. I'd love to go yeah. watch that, or yeah. even if you want to play in it, sure. Yeah. But. I mean, Davos is, is a really cool city. I think it's uh, one of the highest cities in Switzerland, too. Oh. They have a super cool arena with, like, this mm. wooden beam roof. and It's iconic. Yeah. It, oh, I mean, it's in one It's in they the same hold city? It in, yeah, every yeah. year. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. yeah. That's and, their thing. Yeah, but it's an imitational tournament, and usually they only have maybe one German team going every year. And it's such a prestigious tournament that the teams that get invited, they usually want to go there and not let anybody else go. True. What do you mean? I don't understand Well, like that. if well, his they, team gets invited, then you want it to be just your team instead of three other teams from Germany too, right? Oh, so, so it's just kind of like... Well, so they it's not an all-star like, team from Germany? That, no, they oh. usually have one of the German teams go. I think they mm. have a Czech team and from yeah, the the Team Canada and yeah, the Swiss Davos team is playing. See, because Canada picks just their players from over there and makes a team right whereas the european teams take a team from their leagues you know see i mean? didn't know that i yeah. thought each team over there picked just an all-star team to represent germany or no okay. no it's just their mm -hmm. actual league team so what about could your team potentially be there one day or is there one team in germany I mean, that's i mean there is a chance but mm -hmm. uh i think it's nuremberg that's going this year and i mean usually those teams they go there they have a blast and they tell them like we want to be there next yeah, year. So we had so much fun, and yeah. usually they don't pass up on that chance to go. I'd love to go and just watch and just party. I heard great things about it just outside of the, like the players are out having a good time, yeah. talking to the locals, just well, a great it's time. Switzerland, man, it's apparently one of the nicest places on on earth. I, I wouldn't know. But Have you? So you've been to Switzerland? Yeah, you I like played it? Played in a uh, not in a tournament, but in in a drink before. Like we had. A tournament with the under 18 or under 20 team not sure anymore okay too many yeah. teams eh yeah <laughs> <laughs> i was looking at your hockey db or elite prospect the teams you've played for holy smokes you've been places you got to world, play world juniors three times you were at the world juniors right yeah wow and only one of them was like the the big world junior tournament as you guys know it oh all right yeah what well, was teams well, get relegated yeah stuff, right so they go down division so like only oh, the yeah. top tier teams play it for the world juniors essentially but when you went there did you got defenseman of the tournament that was uh the one in germany my last one yeah. but that was the like like the division two tournament where we got yeah we won it and so the year after me they got to play in the big tournament again because okay. of you guys yeah i don't know <laughs> See, yeah. I'm a big fan of the World Juniors. Like, World Juniors, and I know a lot of people are around here. It's like, I mean, people get pissed off if Canada doesn't win around here. Like, it's it's insane. And just to imagine playing. Like, even now at 26, I'm like, man, I would kill to play World Juniors, right? It's such a big stage. So that's really cool, man. I'm, I've never, I don't even think I've met anybody that's played World Juniors. So, yeah. So, yeah. thank you. Be proud I mean, of yourself. There, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but there's a lot of pressure on those Canadian players. I always wonder that. I mean, like... Mm. When Fukali comes here, we'll pepper him with questions about Yeah, that. I mean, just <laughs> oh, yeah. seeing like that uh, when they... Like weeks before they announced the roster, that's all you hear on TSN. I mean, like, oh, this guy has a shot of making it. Oh, this would be a great asset. That's it. I mean, a year before they're talking... As soon as the tournament's over, it's like, all right, who's up next year? And <laughs> the, thing, the thing people <laughs> fail to realize is that these kids are kids, man. They're 15 and 16. If they, like, if they lose or someone has a shitty game, man people just fucking shred them Tear it's like them. i get it you're hiding behind your keyboard you were pissed off and loaded that we lost like but they're fucking kids man like yeah would you ream your son out for 15 years old yeah 
You know what I mean? Because he had a yeah. tough game. Like, come on. These kids are looked at, they're looked upon as professionals in every sport, even basketball, soccer, yeah. everywhere. They're just looked upon as professionals at a young age. Um, we got like 10 more minutes left here to run up on an hour. I want to talk about your championship, uh, your championship run that you guys won over in Germany last year. Um, tell me about that. that. Was it your first year pro or second year pro when you uh, won? Um, well, it's my third year in Munich and we won the championship all three years all three years yeah oh, so I feel back like, oh back that's a bad back. one on my part that's a bad <laughs> one on my part up, yeah i'll shut up for this he's one. like which one do you want me to tell you about <laughs> yeah well, we, i was looking at Take the pictures <laughs> yeah. Yeah. so yeah tell me which one was the most memorable and how did that go i mean uh, they're all memorial they're all memorable yeah they were all special uh i mean the first one was tough because uh i tore my meniscus to practice before game one of uh finals <sighs> So I had surgery and I missed I missed the finals, so that was that was tough. But oh man! Then it made the it the second one even sweeter. Like just I mean you feel part of it, but somehow you're just not, it's not quite same. satisfied. It's not like same. you won it, but you weren't on the ice the last minutes of the game. Mm -hmm. Like. Yeah, and and I needed that, and it kind of like fueled me to like work harder and be ready for the season after. And, and then you that no was probably my best season yet. I uh, ended up winning the defenseman of the year in the league. Uh, yeah, we tore through the regular season, and then uh, yeah, really like went through in the playoffs too, and won our second second title. That was probably the most memorial year, other than winning the Memorial Cup that that was amazing too but <laughs> yeah other than that that was probably my my most fun year i had and then this year uh yeah we're going for the three peat and and you did it yeah i mean a lot of people doubted us at, at the start but i know we got right into the groove we we got to keep a lot of our players and that's key yeah and really like from game one just yeah that's not an easy through. thing to do a three-peat man like think about it you win one year every team comes to play every single night against you guys the next year then you win it again then teams just start to get pissed off they're like we got to beat them we got to beat them and then the third year you win it and you're just like fuck you you know that's incredible. you guys yeah. suck i mean the third year was pretty awesome because the finals went all the way to game seven so what uh, it was a pretty cool series we lost game one then won three in a row Whew. and then lost two again and then oh. going home for game seven yeah you wanted to win it at home anyways right? yeah, yeah exactly so how is it the same setup in the playoffs over there as it would be here like like the first round second round and finals is it three rounds or is it like a tournament style or yeah it's three rounds yeah. best of seven uh, the only thing it's different it's kind of like a pre-playoff thing so uh the first six make it automatically mm -hmm. okay and then basically like seven's gonna play against 12 and eighth again i don't know that does make yeah, sense the, almost like the nhl the bracket, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> they kind of like play out the last spot you know i like see what the, you're saying the it's like the mini series the seventh and right? eighth gonna play against the ninth and tenth that's right. what I'm trying to say. And they play a little like best of three series for those two remaining spots in the to playoffs. Get back, to get in, right? So four teams start on like, it's like the mini series kind of okay, here, yeah. right? So like four teams start and two make it through. So you don't want to finish in the bottom two teams and then you then you have to play that series just to get in to the playoffs. No, I see what you're saying. Yeah. Is, that, is, that, is that correct? That's exactly, yeah. Okay, cool. But the final, final series, game seven, they're all game seven yeah. after that first after little that, mini series. Yeah. Cool. Deadly. That's interesting. Three in a row. Could you guys four peat this year? Do you guys have the same team coming back? Um, I don't want to jinx anything. We actually have a, a quite a big change in our team this year. We Ooh. had a couple of guys retiring off age. I mean, not a bad way to end your career after no. a three peat. Of course not. And then actually, uh, since the German team was so successful in in the Olympics, winning the silver medal. Uh, a couple of uh, guys get a chance in the NHL now. Wow. Sign a entry levels. Crazy. That's cool. So, uh, yeah, we're losing two players to that. And, yeah, I mean, there's always a couple of changes, but it's a couple more than we first thought. Yeah. In a good way. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's always, we always love seeing teammates succeed. And Absolutely. Like, I mean, fulfilling their dream of maybe playing in the NHL. So, yeah, there's going to be a change, but. I mean, it's also excited. Uh, after winning three, 
it's always nice to get some fresh guys in that yeah. haven't won it that are really really hungry yeah horned up yeah, yeah. And, and that's just something you can feel in a dressing room too like yeah. i mean having it like when you want it you want to win again because it feels so great mm -hmm. But then having some some guys in there that just are so hungry for their first championship, yeah. kind of like keeps gets you, in, you excited keeps you too. inspired too, right? Exactly. Yeah. So you guys need a fourth line penalty killer, or because I'm <laughs> I'm pretty out of shape, but I can block shots. <laughs> I'll give, I'll you, give, man, I'll give our guy. coach a call, see what he can do. He'll put a puck and he'll take a puck to the face there. I don't know if I'll get across the the, the border though, but we're good. we'll give her a shot. It sounds like you can play the European style of game. Just don't dump it. Just wing. wing well, I'm it fast. Back. I just don't like to fight and hit. So European <laughs> styles was. It's built for me. You can just go in a suitcase. You get over there with them. <laughs> What's the fuck's that supposed to be? <laughs> right on. Um, yeah, I'd say let's wrap it up there. Unless you have anything else to say. If you have fans, friends, uh, family, you want to give them a shout out, go ahead. Mm. People at the end like to say hi. Should I just scream, go, moose, go? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Feel, feel free. Feel free. Go, moose, go. <laughs> <laughs> They're going to love that. Um, yeah, if you come back uh, for the Mem Cup, jump on the podcast again. Love to talk mm -hmm. to you. Um, I guess your season, would your season be over by the time the Memorial Cup is Yeah, no, year? I already like looked it all up. Even, yeah, you got your butt even like uh, if we make it game seven finals and play in the world championships, uh, You'll still be here. And make it to the finals in the world championships. Yeah. I'd still make it in time for like the last two or three games of the round robin. So <laughs> talk, talk about the dedication. I was just going to say priorities much, eh? That's yeah. fucking sick. All right, man. Well, thank you. Uh, thanks for coming. I appreciate it. Um, everyone that's listening, I appreciate the support. Once again. Once again. Follow the uh, social media accounts, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, SoundCloud, iTunes. I got it all. Yeah, I don't know. Like, share, dislike. I like, don't know. share, comment. Yeah. Do you have any social media you want to plug, Conrad? Say, follow your Instagram. Sure, my Instagram or I have a <laughs> Facebook page. Uh, always welcome to uh, like it, comment, drop a message if you have any questions. Not the fastest to reply, but usually, <laughs> eventually, I get to it and get it done. Beautiful. Here we go. Give him a show. See if you can spell his name. Yeah. Good luck. All right. Once again, appreciate it. We're out. Love you guys. Peace.